from CBS News in Washington. This is the CBS News Night Watch. And here is CBS News correspondent Charlie Rose. Welcome back. The Ku Klux Klan received a sobering message last week that the actions of its members could cost the organization dearly. Last Friday, an all-white Alabama jury awarded $7 million to the family of a black teenager lynched in 1981. Directed to pay those damages, the United Clans of America, the largest of several rival KKK groups. Two United Clans members had been convicted of the killing. With us to talk about the impact of this case is Erwin Sewell. He is a Klan expert with the Anti-Defamation League. Good morning. A pleasure to have you. Good morning, Charlie. What's the significance of this judgment and the consequences of it? Actually, it's a very significant judgment. It's the most, uh, the most powerful blow that's been dealt the Klan in a very long time, in that the organization has now been held responsible, excuse me, <coughs> has now been held responsible as a result of this jury uh, award for the violent crimes committed by several of its members. And in they other words, go ahead. In other words, they're not the organization is not only morally culpable now, but they're financially responsible as well. And that's a big that's a very big development. And the message it sends out to extremist groups is <coughs> you better watch your step, fellas, because if you engage in criminal behavior, not only you personally, but the organization which inspired your acts is also going to be financially responsible, financially liable. How much money do you think the family will get in the end? It's hard to say. I'm not quite certain, but the award of $7 million is a very sizable award. And, of course, the very fact that it was so large means that it'll have a very healthy deterrent effect on, uh, on others who might think of doing the same thing. Now, actually, the mother of this young man, what actually happened, Charlie, was a horrible crime. Yeah, it was. Two Klansmen simply selected a young black man, a 19-year-old kid, whom they had never seen, knew nothing about, and they beat him to death while he was pleading for his life. They beat him to death and then hung his body from the nearest tree in order to prove that the Klan was still alive in, in Alabama. Just a horrible thing. And, and uh, when two people convicted of that, one was sentenced to death, the other sentenced to life imprisonment. And, and, yes. And did the one who sentenced to life imprisonment testify in some way in this trial? That's correct, yes. He, he testified at the original criminal trial. And he also testified in the civil suit brought uh, just recently. Saying what in the civil suit? Saying that uh, he was uh, <clears throat> not only a participant in this horrible crime, but that uh, other members of the organization were complicit in it, uh, indicating, too, that uh, the United Clans of America, by what it, it preached, by what it taught its own members, was, uh, was co-responsible. What will this... The United Clans of America is simply one of the Klan organizations. As I remember, there were, what, two or three of them or more? Actually, there are several rival groups. The, the United Clans of America is the largest, the most secretive uh, of all the groups, and it's also the oldest of, these, of the groups. There are five or six other Klan organizations. How many members do you estimate they have now, the United Clans Total, of America? Uh, about 2,500. Mostly in the, what, in what states? Mostly in the southern states. They have a few scattering up north, but by and large, the UKA, as it's known, UKA mm. is essentially a southeastern-based organization. What do you think this judgment, this decision, this verdict will do to them? Devastate them. Devastate them. And, of course, <clears throat> the organization I itself is, is such a harmful organization in terms of race relations in this country, in terms of the things they stand for that I uh, can't help but say hallelujah. I think all Americans would say that. I think so, too. And the question is, are they on a upswing or downswing? Where are they in terms of ascendancy, descendancy, you know, the status of their organizi organizational efforts? I think, uh, if I can take just a minute, Charlie, to put this thing in perspective, <clears throat> the Klan help, was... You've got at, some water to help yourself there. Don't, I don't know if you've got Oh, yeah, water. okay. Go right. ahead. Thanks. The Klan had as many as three to five million members back in the 1920s. Yeah. It was truly a mass, <clears throat> excuse me, a mass organization, both in the, in the North as well as the South. Then it declined in the 30s, 
It began to revive in the 1960s in response to the Civil Rights Revolution, went to a peak in 1967 of some 55,000 members, then began to decline again and experienced something of a revival in the mid-70s, mm -hmm. uh, reached a peak around 1981 of about 13,000, and it's been gradually losing members since 81. It's down to about 6,500 today. Any relationship or a connection between Klan organizations and these very violent organizations like, uh, I'm not sure of the name, but you know the right-wing mm -hmm. names yes, like the yes, Brotherhood yes, of this, the yes, Brotherhood sure. of that. Sure, the Silent Brotherhood, <coughs> Bruderschweigen as they called themselves, a group also, also called the Order, yeah. which was tried in Seattle last year and found guilty of a series of uh, violent crimes, including murder, the bombing of a synagogue. Yes, the answer is there is a connection. What's the connection? Some of the members of the Order were members of the Ku Klux Klan. That's right. And, in fact, uh, there was some financial uh, relationship as well. The Order stole four and a half million dollars, and there has been testimony that some of that money was passed along to members of the Klan in North Carolina. So there is an inter... it's a kind of an interlocking directorate also, members of neo-Nazi groups were involved in the order. What does it say to you, and what's the significance of the fact that this was an all-white jury in Alabama? It really is quite, uh, quite a tribute, first of all, to the jury, and second of all, to the wonderful changes that have taken place in this country over the past 20 years. I recall very well, back in the 1960s, how hard it was to get a conviction of Klansmen, of violent Klansmen, when only white only whites were allowed on the juries and today you have of course now you'd have mixed juries but this jury happened to be all white and i think it's reflective of the great improvements that have taken place in race relations in the south and throughout the country why was the, the jury all years. white was that at the in, in the voir dire just examination? happenstance just no, happenstance just, happen, just happened to be that way well it is certainly uh, a significant decision and we will watch the consequence of it and we thank you for joining us my pleasure